everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin from the Atkin Report in Los Angeles, and I'm so happy to welcome Brandon Montel from The Voice to this edition of Hillary's Happy Hour. Brandon, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Hillary. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. And I've got to start off with your Team Gwen battle round with Kara Tanae's of Brandy's Have You Ever. It was absolutely riveting. Both of you had incredible stage presence, but what was it like performing together yet at the same time competing with each other? Uh, it was so great to just live out that moment. Kara and I, we've become really good friends. Kara kind of uh, in Atlanta. That's actually where we came from. We flew in from Atlanta to LA and Kara sat directly in front of me on that flight. Neither of us knew each other at all. Um, and we just walked off and went to the exact same person. And that's when we just clicked and just knew that we were going to do the same thing. We were both going to be on The Voice. And ever since that day, we were just really close. We were tight. And the day that both of us found out that we would be on Gwen's team, we were a little sad because we didn't want to knock each other out. But then we ended up being paired <laughs> for the battles. Um, but it was still beautiful. I really love her. Um, she's like a sister to me. And to be singing a Brandy song, which Brandy is one of my idols, and she has always been to me like my number one. So I just hope that I did her justice and made her proud with that. And it was just a beautiful experience. Well, after your performance, John said he loved your higher register and Reba and Niall also complimented you. Meanwhile, Gwen was indecisive and saying that you two messed her up because she didn't know what to do. But what was it like as you waited for her to make her decision? And then tell me your reaction to it. Honestly, I think that I blacked out a little bit during the performance. So I kind of started to slowly come back to myself when we were standing there just waiting to get the coach's opinions and uh, for her to give the final decision. Um, it was a little tough to hear, but I was thankful that John was to be quick enough to save me um, and just give me another chance. But I will always love Gwen. Gwen was an amazing coach. I believe that she gave me some great knowledge that I will just hold dear to my heart. And um, it, it was really great working with her. Well, that was such a dramatic steal when John yeah. swept in to prevent you from going <laughs> home. But maybe it was kind of like karma because Reba blocked him <laughs> after your blind audition. So what emotions were going through you as all of this went down? I remember John saying to me that he wanted me to be on his team. And he was my top two. Gwen was always number one, and John was second for sure. And the way that it played out, I believe that it played out perfectly for me. It was, it was a blessing to me just to be able to hear that from John, that he really wanted me. And I've always looked up to John as well. I grew up singing Ordinary People, which was one of my favorite songs. And I've done so many competitions in that uh, with that song. And I just knew that, I could learn so much more from him. And it was just, that was an amazing moment for me. So I'm so thankful that he gave me that chance to just get back out there again and go to knockouts and just be, become a part of team legend. Let's rewind your blind audition of hers, Hard Place. And Reba was the first of the four chairs to turn. But what factors went into your decision on who to coach you? It sounds I like you went, went in, in thinking, Gwen, like kind of having yeah. a, a you know, hierarchy. But in the moment, though, I know a lot changes for artists. But what was going on for you at that time? The entire time, I just had Gwen on my mind. <laughs> it's so crazy to say. I've always looked up to Gwen as well. She is such an iconic artist to me. Um, pop and R&B is my lane of music. The pop has always been like my first love. And Gwen has excelled in that so perfectly. And I just wanted that knowledge from her just to, to figure out how to just stay in the game and maintain it and just do it so gracefully. And going into that blind audition, I 
loved that Reba did that for me because Reba is a legend as well. I grew up watching Reba consistently on TV and just to have her do that for me, it was validating in so many ways, but I just still couldn't turn, I couldn't change myself. I just had to still go with my heart, my gut and just go with Gwen. So after you're blind, you talked about being part of the underground ballroom culture. So how has that played into your performances on The Voice? Ballroom has helped me so much. I found Ballroom in 2020, the end of the pandemic. And this was a time when I was living in Los Angeles and I was very far away from home. I had no family. And I just kind of had to start over from scratch with friends, just building relationships again. And I came across a few people who were in the ballroom scene at the time. And just speaking with them, they just made me feel so comfortable. And it just felt like family. And we clicked instantly. And they just asked me if I ever thought about being a part of the ballroom scene. I've always thought about being in ballroom. I've been watching ballroom since high school. And I just wish that I had been in New York where it first originated from, you know, and I wanted to be a part of that culture then. So to finally get that chance to experience it and just live in my truth and um, just really find out more about myself. Um, it's been the best, the best thing ever for me. And it's helped me out so much with my confidence, um, just being forced to walk in front of and being judged is, is you know, it's pretty hard to get through when you're being judged, but to receive great compliments from people, that, that just builds me up so much. So I think that Barroom has just really helped me evolve in a really positive way, and it's been the best journey for me. That is so great to hear, but Brandon, I also saw that you sang the national anthem at the LA Clippers game. So tell me more about that. It was very life-changing for me. I'm so thankful to have gotten that opportunity um, to just sing in front of thousands of people and not know one person in there. It's, it was it was great though. I'm so thankful to have had that chance and I will hold that memory dear to my heart. Yeah, that was quite an accomplishment. I was really excited for you as well as I'm excited to see your next performances on The Voice, now on Team Legend. So I want to wrap up our happy hour, Brandon, by thanking you and then raising a toast to your continued success on The Voice. Thank you so much for having me, Hillary. It's been great. Thank you. Cheers to you. Cheers.